Hello, I'm Philippa Thomas. Our top story on impact today, an exclusive BBC report into China's prolific, controversial organ transplant system. Campaigners allege the organs used are still taken from so-called prisoners of conscience, but the head of China's transplant system denies these claims. The head of China's transplant system has denied claims that organs are still being taken from executed prisoners. The former deputy health minister, Huang Jiefu, says there are plenty of organs available from patients who die in intensive care, as well as the rising number of those registering for the country's new organ donation system. But campaigners say there is a roaring trade in the organs of so-called prisoners of conscience to meet transplant targets of up to 100,000 operations every year. Matthew Hill has this exclusive report. She seems so used to seeing Korean visitors. This undercover reporter captures a Korean patient recovering from a liver transplant at a hospital in Tianjin City, China. <laughs> The suspicion is there's a roaring trade in organs being harvested by the Chinese regime. The nurse says they did seven transplants on the previous day. In other countries, it can take years to get a suitable organ, but here it's only weeks. So where are they coming from? China admits it used to take organs from executed prisoners and claims it stopped the practice in 2015. But this campaigner believes organs are still being harvested from prisoners of conscience. Falun Gong is a spiritual movement based on meditation, regarded as an illegal sect by China. In 2005, Annie was sent to this re-education camp in Beijing. She claims healthy Falun Gong practitioners like her were given invasive and unwanted medical tests. I was uh, severely tortured mentally and physically, but uh, at the same time, they uh, took uh, all these uh, Falun Gong practitioners uh, to the nearest uh, hospital and uh, have a regular body check. They include uh, like uh, chest uh, x-ray, the liver test is uh, ultrasound and the blood test uh, every three months. <laughs> Another Falun Gong detainee who was released last year also believes organs are being procured from prisoners of conscience. So in the jail hospital for a few times, they took my hand inside a window and then they would have a rubber band wrapped around my arm and then took the needle over there and then take the blood out. And not just me, all the practitioners of Falun Gong. They uh, force you to renounce your belief. So if you don't do so, they would beat you up. They choose places like your legs, your arms, and your hip part, but your organ part, they don't touch. I've come to a gathering of international transplant surgeons in Madrid. So we think disease. Transplant surgeon Zheng Shusen is also a local leader of an organization set up to persecute Falun Gong followers. I wanted to ask him about a controversial paper he'd written, which falsely claimed no prisoners' organs were transplanted. Did you, in, in the paper, you misled people about the, the organs? You said they were not from prisoners. Professor Sheng, do you not want to answer my questions? Clearly not. But the doctor in charge of China's fledgling organ donation scheme was prepared to take a few questions. He said, so far, there were half a million volunteers. But is that really enough to deliver all the transplants in such a huge country? Last year, we have uh, 15,000 organ transplantation performed. He claimed organs came from some of the six million people who die each year in intensive care. They estimate it's about a hundred, at least a hundred thousand transplants. There's a, there's a long census, long census. I don't want to answer the questions well, because uh, no. Well, how come I, 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 I rang up? I was, able, I was offered a liver very quickly 
But, but you, from you, a hospital in China, you, how is that possible? I don't want to listen and ans answer the question somebody with some political agendas. Well, uh, okay, you understand? That? China has yet to allow transplant surgeons from abroad to inspect their hospitals unannounced. Until there is greater transparency, the suspicion will remain that prisoners detained for what they believe are the new source for organs. Matthew Hill, BBC News. Well, to talk about this, I'm joined by Howard Zhang from BBC Chinese, and we'll also go to Matthew Hill, who is in our Bristol studio. Uh, Matthew, it's quite an investigation, and it is a fact that you were following up that prisoners of conscience were used for organ harvesting in the past. How strong do you feel is, is, is the evidence that, that it's still happening? Well, the fact in the past it was it was prisoners per se who, who were being used for for, for, for executions. That this this is a new allegation at the moment about prisoners of conscience. But uh, yeah, essentially uh, there there have been uh, anyone acting outside st of state control, any minority group is considered a threat by the the communist party. So Falun Gong, they were initially tolerated in in the 1990s. Then in 1999, when there were over 100 million members, a huge number, that was seen as, as a threat. They were described as an, an evil sect uh, by, by the Communist Party. And that's when the detentions, mass detentions began. UN subsequently found credible reports uh, of, on inspections of, of these centres of, of torture uh, going on. Uh, and they are essentially, it's a, it's a peaceful uh, belief, essentially, is that what the beliefs they hold. Uh, on the other hand, we have a, a report last year from America, the American Congress uh, looking at growing concerns about the treatment of the Uyghur community, the Muslim uh, minority in the autonomous region of China, where there are, they say there are credible reports of 500 uh, to uh, 500 to, to a million fa uh, people being detained in these in these in these camps. So you have talked about a wide range of people who you feel could be vulnerable, and and from your reporting, what you seem to be uh, telling us is. There is no problem or appears to be no problem in setting up a transplant operation. The supply, from your point of view, looks suspiciously easy. Well, it, it is the time scale. I mean, I was offered a liver for $100,000 at rather short notice. Uh, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's a time scale. And, and I think there's, there are other concerns about, uh, for instance, you know, having a ready supply of volunteers. Uh, yes, there are a half a million, according to the government, there volunteers. In the UK, for instance, there are 25 million volunteers in a tiny country compared to China. So the question is, where are the organs coming from? There's a reticence uh, to allow the body uh, not to be buried whole. Confucian beliefs are that the body should be buried whole. So the government are going to have to overcome that if they're to get more people to sign up to this to this registry. There are also uh, reports, we've done interviews with a, with a former doctor who describes uh, going to uh, execution ground, witnessing someone shot through the right hand side so that they stayed alive, their heart was still beating as he retrieved uh, his liver, etc. Uh, and therefore the organs would have been in a better state to be transplanted. And one of the points that you make towards the end of your report there is that uh, doctors, transplant specialists from outside China have not had access to the system that seems to be running at such a pace. That's the Transplantation Society. They have had limited access on an announced basis to a small number of hospitals, but they haven't been allowed into the military hospitals that are at the centre of a, a lot of these allegations. They point out that China has signed up to an international World Health Assembly uh, protocol, which is for greater transparency. But uh, many campaigners believe that transparency does not exist in terms of for instance, the traceability of the organs. They're also concerned about a recent development uh, on the Uyghur community aged between 12 and 65 who are, who are having biometric tests done. That's blood DNA samples done. The Chinese say that is to combat the, the threat of terrorism, uh, whereas these campaigners believe that there's a sort of more sinister motive. Um, can we say, is this definitely happening on prisoners of conscience? I don't think we can say it's definitely happening, but there again, I don't think we can say it's definitely not happening. Matthew, thank you very much. With me now, uh, Howard Zhang, editor from the BBC's Chinese service. And I know that you have been uh, talking about this. Uh, it's a, it is a big talking point. What do you make of, of what we're uncovering here? Well, over the past many, many years, while we are covering this uh, topic, there's all sorts of substantial evidence coming up. And uh, we also have people from both sides giving their takes on it. I think what Matthew uh, just said, touched on two very important points. One is 
the uh, the role money plays in all of this, mm. because uh, China now, you know, whatever outside people call it, a communist country or a state capitalist country, essentially money is the number one law. You know, if you can make a profit, it, it drives it provides the motive for lots of things to happen, whether you're a, a uh, official locally at a certain level or you're a uh, doctor or you're a police. If there is incentive, monetary incentive, lots of things, lots of rules can be bent. And that's one thing I do think, you know, as I said, we don't have, at least for, from my side, you know, be, become, uh, besides witnesses and things, I don't have direct evidence in front of me that can categorically say, okay, this way or that way. But I do believe, and from all the circumstantial evidence, there is some type of uh, uh, organ trade going on, and, uh, but to what degree, whether they involve a uh, person of conscience, at this moment we don't know for but, sure. But we do know that the that the the organ transplant system in China is is thriving. Uh, hospitals are busy. Hospitals are busy, and uh, the culture of not wanting the body uh, to be divided into mm. different parts is yes very very deeply ingrained in Chinese culture. That is true as well. Uh, but one point I do want to add, you know, uh, the former uh, health minister Huang Jiefu, and he actually represents a group of uh, people who within the Chinese system who are trying to push for more transparency, more sort of uh, law and regulation around the issue. So he's, uh, you know, one of the few people who's still willing to come out, even answer or not answer a question to deal with the media in the West. And most of the other officials in China will probably keep a very, very, uh, uh, you know, low profile, low, low profile yeah. and long silence over any of these topics. They, they will stay away. I think that's a really important point to make. Uh, and I'm just wondering, do you think it's fair to say that there seems to be, perhaps it's a system that's in transition or in process, it's moving from one uh, source of supplies and looking for others? I think it's very difficult to prove at this moment that there's a central government drive for a uh, for-profit type of organ harvesting law still in because uh, once they stopped 2015 when they pushed out this new law saying no more kind of uh, using prisoners for it, it's difficult to say there's still that law in play but whether they've transitioned to a more open and, and transparent obviously not yet and uh, in between there's so many layers of uh, you know different government interests of local and and uh, central government as well as the the police system it's also very concentrated in terms of power and, and lacking in, in transparency. So all these and the, the drive from hospitals, from local hospitals to make money because they have to feed their doctors and nurses. And all these elements start to combine into a, a fairly, you know, really complex kind of a picture for us here. We have to leave it there, but Howard and Matthew, thank you both very much. It's important to, to say what we found and what we're still investigating. Thank you.